mysterious adults who were declared missing. What made you decide to leave? Where did you go? And how did you feel about being found? I had 3 weeks off work, living with my parents at the time. My parents went to the cabin for 2 weeks, and I was left home alone. I had some money and free time, so after the second day of being home alone, and bored I decided to get a cheap flight to England, and stay there for 4 days. I live in Norway. Now I went, and after about 5 hours in London my phone broke. I don't call my parents that much, and no real friends at the time, that I talk to a lot. So not that big of a deal. What I didn't know is that my mom came home that day due to forgetting our dog's medication. I was gone and she couldn't reach me to find out where I was. After 48 hours she lost it and called the cops. That was fun to come home to. About 6 months after I got out of the marines I got a wild hair up my ass, snuck into a nearby rail yard and hopped on a random cargo train. IDKY. Maybe I'd seen too many movies. It turned out to be an absolutely miserable ride, and I ended up nowhere Pennsylvania. I said to hell with it, and took a greyhound home, after I showered up. Anyway I got home, and found out that my family freaked out, because they couldn't get a hold of me for 4 days, even though they know I'm prone to go off on adventures randomly. I talked to the cops, they laughed. It wasn't a biggie. Don't hop trains, kids. It's uncomfortable as fuck. I was not declared missing, because my father didn't care enough, but here is my story anyway. I started working when I was 18, and I didn't spend a lot of money, so I kept saving it for at least 6 months. One day I decided I would move to a friend's house in another city, closer to where I work, which we shared with some other dude. So I would pay part of the rent and we shared all the bills and food. One year into that, and a childhood friend of mine went to my father's house looking for me, we haven't spoken a while, and my father said casually to him to go to my bedroom and see if I was there. He then calls me, and I tell him that I moved one year ago, and to my surprise, my dad didn't notice. I didn't receive one phone call from my father until two years later, when he was diagnosed with diabetes and needed extra money to buy medicine and other stuff. From the other side of the story, this has been told to me from a relative, so the details might be a little incomplete but. During we I my great uncle went off to war, and my great grandma never saw her brother again, all letters just stopped. He was presumed dead, and was last known to be in an African country I think, but I might be wrong. My great grandma never really got over the loss of her brother, and wondered what happened to him from time to time before she died in 97. Anyway around 3 years ago a relative of mine had a message on a family tree website stating that she was the granddaughter of my great uncle. Apparently he had a head injury in the war and forgot his whole life, name included. He ended up in Australia and built a new life, remarried, had kids etc, and over time bits of his memory came back. He passed on some of this to his children but didn't like to talk about it, we don't really know why he didn't get back in contact with his family maybe he felt like it had been too long to try to make contact, but for the rest of their lives his mom and dad refused to move out of the house they lived in in case he did come home and couldn't find them. He had since died, but his granddaughter felt his relatives here in England should know what happened to him and eventually found us due to a fairly uncommon surname. I know that my great grandma and her parents would have appreciated knowing this before they passed, even if they knew they would never see him again. I ran away from an abusive home, spent some time homeless, ended up pregnant, and got my shit together, and became a functioning adult. My parents never reported me missing, but my social worker did. Only discovered I was a registered missing person, when I was involved in an incident where police were called, and they background checked me. I had had a child by then, registered all the various licenses an adult acquires, owned a home, even received welfare payments at one stage, and paid all my taxes etc. I do not have a common name. So I assume they didn't luck too hard for me. I took a shitload of acid at Coachella, and got lost in, and around the desert for 5 days. My friends called the cops, to report me missing on day 3, and were getting ready to call my parents, in Europe, had I not turned up that day, we found each other at the Cheesecake factory hundreds of miles away in La. 
I rather enjoyed my adventure, but overall was quite relieved to have found my friends. So not the kind of story you were expecting, but a couple friends and I were officially missing for a few hours. We went hiking, and one of my friends brought someone new. We didn't know it when we set out, but new person had milliseconds and had no business hiking. We made it a couple miles in before he started having jaws. We decide to turn back and he falls and sprains an ankle. We tape it up and try have him lean on us, but his other ankle gives out. We tried to fashion a makeshift litter for him, but he was a bigger guy and his jacket wouldn't support his weight. So we called search and rescue to get him out of the woods. Officially, we were declared missing hikers, even though we relayed exactly where we were to dispatch. It took maybe 3 hours or so for them to assemble and then get into us. They got him strapped down to this really cool collapsible litter with an ATV wheel on the bottom and rolled him out with us following. The folks were great and never made us feel bad about getting into a bad situation. Much thanks and love to all the SAR volunteers in the world. Was seriously depressed and made a bunch of suicide calls to friends and family. I was in the woods next to a grocery store for about a month. Ate out of the dumpster and was pissed when Sheriff found me. My dad called them and my friends used my last online message to track me. All I can say is I was pissed and hungry. I was seriously depressed and I posted some love y'all but don't bother trying to reach me anymore bs on my fb. I vanished. I ended up going to the other side of my metroplex and creating a new life for myself. I even changed my name and essentially became a new person. I would still scope out FB and such in a regular basis to keep up with family and what was going on. One day a post was made about my grandmother being taken off life support and I broke no contact and 20 minutes after I located her, I was at the hospital. The hospital was in my hometown, so people saw me and I had to return to being me again. That sucked was for the best in the long run though. I had enough time to heal and was no longer depressed. Best part of the year I took off from being myself was that I met the love of my life. Very awkward conversation when I had to tell him my real name though. I've told part of this story on reddit before, but I moved out of an abusive home my last semester of high school. A few times when I was 16 and tried to be more independent my parents used threatening to kick me out and throwing me outside in the middle of the night as a scare tactic. When I was 18 they started threatening again so in anticipation of getting thrown out in the cold I snuck all my stuff out of the house via my friend and her parents stored it for me over the course of about a week. They threw me out on a valentine's day night in 30 degree weather and instead of pounding on the door and begging to come back in I turned around and walked away and haven't looked back since. My parents reported me missing but the police didn't put too much effort into finding me as I was 18. And it was pretty obvious I'd taken my stuff and didn't disappear into thin air. And of course my parents were not going to admit that I'd gone missing after they threw me out. They weren't even worried so much as controlling. If it were up to them, I'd be their complacent slave to this day. I had about 4 days of feeling safe before being found. I had a hard time transferring schools so close to the end of the school year, so instead of risking not graduating I decided to stay at the same school and take over my own affairs. I met with a youth liaison who determined my situation unsafe and helped me increase the security on my school records. No one was supposed to be able to receive any information about me if they called and no one was supposed to be able to pull me out of class and visit if they showed up at the school. The vice principal at my school didn't believe me when I tried to tell her my parents were abusive and told me she sees that stuff happen all the time with app students when parents are sad to see their kid about to go off to college. My mom tried various people at my school until she got a hold of the vice principal who hinted to my mom that I was still enrolled at the school. She called me into the office midday where I was met by my mom and stepdad and the vice principal trying to mediate a family reunion. I yelled at the VP for threatening my safety, told my parents to leave, and went back to class. My mom stopped caring and gave up when she realized I wasn't coming back. My stepdad stalked me for a couple of months so I couldn't go anywhere alone for a little while and still have anxiety about going out alone sometimes. I was staying at a friend's house 
and was otherwise homeless, so I didn't have much of a choice, but to lay low until I graduated. The parents of the man who is now my fiancé helped me get out of town and let me move in with them. When I finished high school, I got on my feet and became a functioning adult. Aside from the PTSD I do alright. My stepdad has no idea where I live and I don't speak to the creepy fuck at all. I was 8 hours out of Denver for about a week and a half longer than scheduled on a construction job while I up in the mountains. We were staying in a hotel in a tiny as shit little town, and because of the canyon's phone service was completely gone. My brother filed a missing persons report and even got a detective to start looking into my case, because nobody in my family could contact me directly. Hilariously enough anybody in my family, including the detective, could have just called my works office and would have been filled in on the job being extended. It was all a funny misunderstanding, but I was reported missing for about a week. I moved away from my hometown and in with a boyfriend to states away. My family and I have never been close, so talking to my mom was not a regular occurrence. After living with my boyfriend for 6 months and ignoring maybe 2 phone calls in that time from my psycho mother, my sister calls to tell me that my aunt, who is fairly normal and has a good relationship with her daughter slash, talks to her regularly, has convinced my mother to file a missing persons report since she hasn't heard from me. I was 26 and when I was moving away had made it very clear to her where I was going. Cue the awkward phone call to the police station and then to my mother. I was depressed at the time and fed up with the situation I was in, so I went to York for a couple of days to see someone. I was living in supported accommodation at the time and didn't tell them I was going, so they had to report me missing when I didn't come home after 48 hours. I'd been staying at my mum's for a couple of weeks before that and left my charger there when I went home so no one could contact me because my phone died on the way up to York. I came back to the staff where I lived telling me I'd been reported missing and that I needed to contact my mum because she dropped my charger off for me. I had loads of Facebook messages and posts on my Facebook profile asking if anyone had seen me. My mum had even spoken to my dad for the first time since they'd split up. I had family phoning me to check I was safe and I had the same lecture about letting people know where I was going so many times. The police came round to speak to me and gave me the same lecture and also told me that if I'd been gone for another day, I would have been in the local papers. I felt bad about the whole thing because it really wasn't my intention to make people worry about me. I just wasn't in a good frame of mind at the time. Never reported lost but everyone thought I was dead. I stayed up late drinking whiskey and playing guitar slash singing and laughing with a couple high school buddies I hadn't seen in a while. I went to bed without setting my alarm and left my phone on silent. So around 11am the next day I wake up hung over to the police banging on my door with my dad. I was supposed to be at work at 8 so when I didn't show up they called my emergency contacts, my parents, and they assumed that I was dead. I was well into my 20s and had a decent corporate job. I met my mom on the way into work and she was hysterical, convinced I was dead. My dad was furious that I was just hungover. I guess I'm always really dependable so when I didn't show up to work everyone assumed the worst. I had an uncle go missing a couple years back. He went out on a sales call and had kind of a mental break. He stayed in bed in the same hotel, unplanned for three days doing nothing, overcome with depression, not even able to answer the phone or anything like that. My cousin managed to track him and it all ended up okay. He had gotten a divorce a couple months before with my aunt and I think it really ate at him. His youngest daughter has moved back in with him and he does a lot of work with his church doing sound and a lot of other stuff, which I think is helping. I grew up without a dad, so he was the one that taught me to change oil, cut grass, use tools. Most of my experience with guns comes from his backyard and all around he'd been a great male influence. I'm glad he ended up safe. One of my college roommates disappeared right after finals our senior year but before graduation and no one has heard from her since it has been about 8 years. We've tried tracking her down through a few different avenues and nothing has worked. We've found one mention of her helping to write an academic paper about 4 years ago and that is it. 
A few years back I was dating a guy who was moving large amounts of marijuana. Long story short, they raided his house when I happened to be there, and they took us both to jail. They held us for 3 days, and even though I didn't actually do anything I was part of a criminal investigation, and made me stay in jail for 3 days. Apparently, the reason was, because they were trying to get him to tell them who his supplier was, and they didn't want him to know, that he had been busted. Well at the time, my boyfriend was living with two of his friends. Both of our cars were out front in the driveway. The house had been ransacked, and we were both gone with the wind. They thought we might have been arrested, but since the police were hiding the fact that we were in jail, our names didn't show up in the jail records. So after a day or so, they called the police and filed a missing persons report. When we got out, man they freaked out. They really thought we were at the bottom of the river. When I was in Mexico, age 13, I was at the beach with my family. My grandpa was being a dick when I tried to tell him I was gonna go walk to a neighboring uninhabited beach, and even though I know he wasn't listening I went anyways. Two or three hours later I came back and saw my sister frantically walking around the beach. I knew immediately that she was looking for me, so I told the 20 something year old guy I had been wandering around with that I had to go, and it was nice meeting him. Turns out my mom had called the cops within 30 minutes of me leaving the main beach and thought I was sex trafficked. I don't regret it, the uninhabited beach was awesome and there were the cutest little red crabs all over the place. I had fun, but was seriously annoyed, because I was stupid and 13, that my mom called the cops. God mom you're so dramatic haha. 